one, two, three, start. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Amanda. And I forgot to do a close up of this painting at the end of my last video. So I will show you that first of all. And then the next thing I will do is I'm going to do a new painting today on an eight by eight inch canvas. And I'm still trying to figure out how to use these pre-mixed pouring paints. And I think I'm gonna try a Dutch pour today or my type of full coverage blowout instead of a Dutch pour because I try to cover the entire canvas. But these paints are really thin and I know typically people that do Dutch pours use really thin paints. So maybe I can get something that I like that way. So I'm still experimenting with these new paints. Sorry. So I'm still experimenting with these new paints to see what I can get. But here is my 8x8. This is from um, Hobby Lobby. It's a Master's Touch canvas. I like the ones that have this kind of backing on them instead of the uh, canvas over the edges on the back. I don't know why. I just do Get this centered. Hold on. Let me test this. Okay, I really need to clean my spinner, but okay, here it is. Here's my eight by eight inch canvas. I will take a break and show you the close up from my last painting, and then I'll get started on this one. Hey guys, I forgot to do a close up of this video or of this painting whenever I finished my last video. So I'll go in and show you some of the details. Um, I like some of this, like it's a pretty flower, but I don't like this white that popped up through everything. And um, that's because the base coat was too thin and I tried too hard to spread my paint too much. This is where I kept messing on that mistake and I still never quite fixed it. Um, so this isn't my favorite. I've had a hard time with these paints. And then around the edges, it has this weird look where the white paint kept coming through. It looks almost like cracking, but it's not cracking. It's just the white popping through. It looks kind of muddy towards the center and the white coming up just really shouldn't be there. So let me know what you think. Um, I know it's not the best one I've done. The colors themselves are pretty when they're separated, like that blue is really pretty. But I just need to figure out a way to get better with these paints. Okay, so that close up was really quick because I tried to do it in one minute for TikTok. Um, hold on. Okay, now all of that being said and done, let's get my lights positioned where they don't blind me. But I'm just going to pour some of these paints on this canvas and see. I'm gonna put more of this white down than the other colors probably. I'm not gonna do a base coat because my hair dryer is gonna blow all the colors out. I may use more of that in just a little bit. And I think I will start with, I'll do it, try to do the same order I've been using. Put some, whoops, of the sapphire blue. Maybe that was too much. And then some springtime blue. See, they're very thin. That's why I've been having trouble using them. Uh, 
I'll put some copper in there. Maybe I won't open it all the way. Hold on. I just want to drizzle. Some of the copper on there. Maybe put some more white. Okay. Hold on. Try to keep my hands clean as I go. Some berry. Some moth. And some yellow. Today was the first day of spring, so these colors do remind me of springtime. So that's nice. Um, maybe a little bit more copper. A little bit more. No, probably no more white. I'm going to go ahead and use the hair dryer and get my full coverage and then see what else I want to do with this. Okay, so I have my coverage, my, and that's interesting, but it's not, um, let me get my corners. And as I do my corners, I'll talk. I think it's interesting, and the paints do move very well because they're very thin. Um, but that's not my favorite thing yet. I don't, like, the piece isn't. I wouldn't say, oh my God, I love this piece. And there's still a lot of paint in the center. And I don't have any silicone or anything. So I don't have any kind of cell makers in this, which you don't have to have cells in one of these blowouts. But I kind of think that whenever I get cells or lacing or something in these, it's is when I get like the details that make me say, oh, that I really like that. So I have to figure out what else to do. I am getting a little bit of that right here with the white, actually, as it sits. Most of my sides are good, but there's a little bit of not coverage on the side. So let me spin and see what happens. It should help level the paint out and cover some of the sides. And I see some paint on my tablecloth, which I didn't expect. So I'm glad I have the tablecloth down there. Give me a second.
Okay, so now that's muddying as the paint's spreading over here. Give me, um, I think it looked better before I spun. Huh. Let me do something else. Give me a second to think about it. Let me check my sides for coverage. Let me spin one more time to level the paint out and then I have an idea. Okay, so I got a few of the little white, de like little details I like over here, but as I spun and the paints melted together, they muddied. So let me start over. I have like complete coverage on my base coat. Let's just do like one circle in the center or towards the center. Whoa, that was a little bit unintentional, but now let's go around this with some white. It's that's way too much, but that's just how it came out. Maybe a little bit too much white. I wonder if I, I kind of like that a little bit better because I like the wispy look around, but there's a big heavy section of paint 
kind of right there. So I feel like I have to do something else to level it out a little bit, but I don't know what to do. I wonder if it will dry okay. Um, I could pick it up and tilt, but I would mess up like all the these wispy little lines that I like. Um, I could spray from the center to the corners again, but I might muddy stuff. I could spin to level it out, but I don't really want to muddy it again. I think maybe I need to add silicone to one of the paints. That might make it it nice. Um, overall, let me look at it. Overall, I think it'll level out. I think it'll be okay. I think I have put a little bit too much white around, but I've put a lot of paint on this. I've done it twice already. I could use the hair dryer again and try to go towards from the center towards the corners again, but then I think I would muddy everything. And I've said that twice now. I am sorry that I repeat myself sometimes, but the first time I'm thinking and the second time I'm telling you what I'm deciding. Um, so I'm going to leave it like this and see how it dries and see what happens as it dries. There is a little bit extra paint right here compared to the rest of it. So I'm hoping that that doesn't have an issue. I am, I do see a few little cells right there. I wish I had more of those in the painting overall, but I didn't have any silicone, so I didn't really expect a lot of those. I didn't expect so much white around the outside, but I poured, whenever I poured from that bottle, it poured really fast, so it poured a lot. Um, overall, I think that this technique is the better way to use these paints better than the last two that I've done. Um, this looks a little bit muddy right here, but that's that yellow and the copper together. It's not really muddying and it's not really, like sometimes paints, if you put, say yellow, sorry. Sometimes if you put yellow and purple next to each other or blue and orange or something and they mix together, they make a brown and it's called mud. Um, that's not what's happening. That's the yellow and the copper there. So that's fine. And I'm afraid if I use the hairdryer anymore, it would kind of muddy those, um, it would muddy the colors together. But for right now, I think it's okay. And I'll leave it as it is and see how it dries. I'm still not a super fan of these paints and I want to try them again in different ways. But out of the three that I've done with them so far, I like this one the best, I think. So there's that. And that's all for this one. I'm going to let it dry and see what happens as the paint levels itself out before I do a close-up. So I might do the close-up at the beginning of my next video after it has dried. So that's all for this one. Thanks as always for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share my videos with anyone who you think may be interested. Okay, so if you could help me out by subscribing on YouTube and following me on TikTok at Gemini Witch, I would greatly appreciate it because I'm trying to get to monetization on both platforms. And that's it for this one. Let me know what you think and have a blessed day. Bye. Hey guys, I waited a couple days to let this dry before I decided to record the close-up for the ending. And now that I've had time to look at it as it has sat and dried, I like it a lot better. I Now I want to try these paints again in the Dutch pour technique. This looks a little muddy here. But I think that's where the copper mixed with those colors. And I don't think it's actually muddy. Um, I want to get some more colors in these paints maybe. And try some more Dutch pours. 
and I think that might be what they're best for because they're so thin. Um, my Dutch pour is not a traditional Dutch pour because I try to cover the whole canvas, so I call it a full coverage blowout. Um, I like the wispy edges around this though. And I like that this yellow is so bold right here because yellow is my favorite color. And then the blues up here are really nice. And then that mauve and berry. I think the colors look okay together. I want to get a few more colors in these kinds of paints and see what else I can do. But my favorite part of these are these wispy edges. It looks like something kind of blowing in the breeze. And I guess that's kind of what the paint is doing, is blowing in the hot air from the hairdryer. So let me know what you think. And thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. Bye.